some of the people you may recognize from having been on the stage, but there are at least two I've never seen them before. <laughs> <laughs> you are one of the writers. I am. This is Dowie. Yeah. <laughs> Writer. Yes. It was amazing. <laughs> I thought I might actually hear De Ponte turning around in his grave. <laughs> I think if he, he would have been having the time of his life. I'm sorry, I don't remember you said. Being an AM the city's over. I wish I'd invented in this fabric. <laughs> <laughs> Best deal. Um, the purpose of this is so that you can talk to the performers, the creatives, um, and they will answer any question, whether it's about Brexit, anything. <laughs> <laughs> so does it, I've got one to start off with. And this is to the writers. <laughs> it is, I'm afraid, it is a very serious question. Who came up with the names Fiona and Charlotte? <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> um, interesting. Was there, <coughs> go on. Was there a purpose? They're, they're great names. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, has anyone seen The Princess and the Frog in the Disney film? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a character in that in a big pink dress who's very feminine, but at the same time you wouldn't mess with her. And I was like, oh, that's a great character. And her name is Charlotte. And I was like, can I have that? So then I went to Google and had a look at 18th century names, and there it was. Oh, they're, they're actually, they're actually 18th, 18th century, century names. names. My next question is, what made you decide to turn an opera into <coughs> a much shorter, yes. pleasanter <laughs> evening? <laughs> um, I tell this story so often people get bored with that but <laughs> Two years ago, I was doing a placement at the Royal Opera House, and uh, every day on lunch, we'd have to get in this tiny lift and uh, go down three floors. And on the lift, there was a list of the operas coming in the season, and they advertised it as Mozart Band Opera. And I was like, Mozart had an opera? Like, it, it just didn't go together for me. It's like, I'm a huge Mozart fan. And for me, Mozart and Band Opera, I couldn't quite add up. So, I was like, I've never heard of this opera, I'll go along and watch it. And I went and watched this production of it, and I sat there and I went, God, this is terrible. <laughs> it was one of the worst things I've ever seen. But the story of it was so good, and I was really interested. I'm a huge fan of Marathon, and the last play we did was a Marathon play. And I went away and I looked at Cosi Fantuti, and there's an essay that says, if it was ever to be turned into a play, Marathon should have done it because it's got all the things he's interested in human relationships, bath and sexes, this whole experiment idea. And a project came up at school where we had to do an adaptation of something from one genre into another. And I just thought, I, one of those projects where you're like, I have to do it rather than I want to do it. And it was a real passion project. So then I submitted that and it was okay. And then my grad show was going to go for school. And I decided I really want to do this as my grad show. And I knew the writing of the original draft wasn't strong enough. And me and Andy lived together. So I said to him, he's a keen writer as well, so I said to him, would you help me with it? And we were up every day till three in the morning, coming up with it, taking drafts into the room, getting the original cast to work through the drafts, taking it home, rewriting it. So it took about a year to write, I'd say. Well, you had the first draft, um, the, it was as the first draft until about three weeks until we rewrote it all, but the, it had been in embryo for, for yeah, well over 12 months. Were there many rows? <laughs> no, no we don't. I think the only row was like, if you do this scene, I'll go and make dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And would you consider now setting two with Wagner's ring cycle into it? <laughs> Never. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, we've hopped it. Do you have a question? Is this your first original degree? We did, um, whilst we were training together, there, there's, um, there was a particular subject that gave you the opportunity to adapt things, should you like. So we've taken um, 
Um, John Ford's Tis, Tis, Pity, Tis, Tis Pity, She's a Whore, and turned it into a crap piece called The Trespassers. <laughs> and um, then we, yeah, we decided we wanted something a little bit more full bodied. And um, that was much more of a confused adaptation because uh, we actually incorporated some of Ford's lights, um, whereas this was pretty much wholly fresh. So, yeah, I suppose, yeah, this. <coughs> it had a really strong feeling for the period, so mm -hmm. I know that you are really into that. I do like it's the, the same with you, isn't it? <laughs> no, I, I really discovered this period through. Uh, again, we, we had a term where we kind of looked at restoration comedy, and uh, Dowie had been going on about how much he loved it, and I kind of never really had much of an opportunity to see him show his true colours until that project came around, and he just knew it. Um, but as he said. I really like writing, so I knew that I could fall back on his knowledge of the period. And when we were doing that project, there was uh, an incredible amount of research. So you do know he's only on Wikipedia the night before. The, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the movement, the style, the stunts, everything was so perfect. Have you all trained in that, or is it, again, is this Dowie with a big stick? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we trained in um, kind of been to drama schools and done courses and that sort of thing. And I think some of us have a background in dance, which made it quite, I don't know, it's, it's such a, a, a quick link between what you do on there and ballet. And every move in ballet is like that in a way. Um, so certainly for us girls, I'll speak for, or you know, you speak for too, it is such a, like, <laughs> like you can just imagine these, these little girls having been trained to, to stand this way through ballet and its long history. So it definitely that helped a lot. And, and in a weird way, the, the flow of the text matches with the flow of dance, and it is so musical. So you just feel instinctively, and with Dowie's help, how to sort of match um, the ballet movements with the music of what you're speaking. But I don't know about you guys. I entirely agree. <laughs> <laughs> this is quite interesting, actually, because at the start of the play, before it all gets swept up, we wanted a very different, an obviously different tempo between the boys' scene and the girls' scene to contrast them as much as we could. And uh, in that period, as well as them all being trained in court dance, um, also the, the men would have been sword fighting. So the, the staccato rhythm in the, in the first scene is supposed to kind of match that. And in the girls' scene, it's a much more malicious kind of laconic. Like that. <laughs> and of course, if you look at the rehearsal pictures, you can see Dowie in nearly every shot showing every position. <laughs> you only have to walk around any theatre to find him doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great picture of him somewhere dressed as Richard the Second. Are you here, Stuart? Go and fetch it. <laughs> it what amazes me is how particularly the ladies, how different you look. It took me a little while to work out who it was you. <laughs> um, but dear, you two look so different. And um, Queen of the Night. <laughs> Would you like to do the whole thing now? Yeah, of course, one second. <laughs> um, the whole look of the thing was wonderful for the set. And tell us about all this fabric. So, yeah, we just, we just wanted something very grand, uh, something very operatic, so I just went back to the arch procedure here uh, using the opera, and then, uh, yeah, I kind of used this slide in the middle in regards of the lights that I've got uh, at the front of this car, so it was a bit my, yeah, my, my line, my working line, um, yeah. Because I was wondering that this, the re all of it is calico, because yeah. we talked about, because the whole play is an experiment, you use calico when you're experimenting on pattern cutting. Yeah. So it was an obvious choice, and Ludwig was were doing his research in the period, and they used to furnish houses all in one material, whether it was marble or wood. So that's where it came about, really, wasn't it? And then we're like, even the furniture, even the contract, everything must be calico. <laughs> and then we ended up buying 120 meters. Would anybody like to buy us? <laughs> <laughs> um, are you doing it again? Are you taking it somewhere else? Hopefully, but 
we don't have a stage in the match. Yeah. <laughs> It is available for weddings and <laughs> <laughs> fabulous after meal entertainment. And you're not from Birmingham? And uh, no. from France. Yeah, and I'm living in London. So, yeah. And you you always design sets? Do you do costumes? Uh, I do costumes, set, uh, production design, bit of production. Yeah. So if, if money was no object, and you were to take this to the Drury Lane money, how would you change it? Um, it's the closing, there's no use them going there. Not now, not We work it and we draft it. Um, we knew already, really, at in rehearsals, when I mean, we talked, you know, there are moments that don't quite work and that we'd like to flesh out some more. And, um, we had talked about making it a two act play but I don't think I don't think that's you lose the the only break would be just before the doctor scene and you lose all the the, 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 the boil. Because we were talking about making it a real comedy of manners rather than a farce. And we were advised when we by our lecturer who's a writer as well and he said to us, no, leave it as an hour well originally it was an hour seventeen. Now it's an hour and uh, 35. Um, and he was like, no, it's good, it's nice, it's snappy, leave it as it is. So we just cleaned it up rather from the one that was in London to this one. It's a lot cleaner, a lot slicker. And it could use some more nips and ducks. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful. I think he was leaving with, he recorded it. He's gone off to do his own thing. It was a two hour. Um, any more? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. So um, it's really interesting how you handled sort of the political aspect of the play, and I was wondering, um, I can't remember the maid's name, I'm so sorry, I'm really bugging the name. Phoebe. Phoebe. Yeah. So, was Phoebe, did you put Phoebe in, or was she originally in? So, in the original opera is set in Italy, uh, and <coughs> it's, it's near enough the same in the journey it takes. Apart from the ending, and I brought the original ending in, we all sat down and we watched the opera, and we were all horrified, because in the original, when the boys come in and reveal who they are, the women throw themselves down on their knees, and they say, we are sorry that we have done this, do not kill us, we know we are horrible people, <laughs> and they accept all the blame, yeah. and it's awful. <laughs> and it, it's the one thing where you're like, it is, I mean, even after Mozart died, Mozart, the wife was interviewed about this opera, and she said, ah, because he's Fantuti. I hope that one doesn't last in history. <laughs> and it did die for about 200 years, and then during the war, funnily enough, it got revived again. Um, but it was very clear, like, we made it in the room, when we spoke about the ending, we said, this, if we're going to do this play today, it has to speak about people today. It, yeah. You cannot end this play with the girls throwing themselves down going, oh, sorry, we've done this, we're terrible people, because they're not. Yeah. Everyone in this place is a horrible person, as far as I'm concerned. So, it, with Phoebe's final speech, I'll be personal, I didn't write any of that speech, that was all Andy. Um, and he said, I was listening to it tonight, and I was like, bloody hell, that's a good speech, isn't it? <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I think you're the one to answer that question. Yeah, it's very aware of the, the political climate that at the moment is particularly tentative. And what was really nice tonight is in that first scene where Alistair's like, oh, no, this guy, you, I mean, the reaction is what we wanted. Um, and, and by the end, you realise exactly as you say, that they all go on the same journey and they all look um, equally as foolish as the next person. Um, and the title, because um, Cosi Fantucci spelled with a... With Cosi Fantucci spelled with a P, is all women are like that, all women are the same. But if there's about it Cosi Fantuti with an I, it's all lovers are the same. So the original title, uh, as a more or less direct um, attack on women, uh, was going to be uh, We're All Like That. But we were doing some research into like Michelle Foucault, Judith Butler, like the big names on gender theory and stuff. And uh, we came across, I was watching this document, it was actually as you were making the shirts. And uh, it was talking about Michel Foucault and um, an essay he'd written, because he did a great sweeping history on all sorts of things. Um, and it was called In Praise of Folly. And I was like, that, that sounds like what it should be, because, yeah, I mean, I'm repeating myself, but they're, they're all as valuable as their names. 
I think the play is much kinder and much, uh, I hate the word nicer. Um, the opera is actually quite vile. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. And shocking. The music is wonderful. It's one of those things you want to put on, listen to at home, but not even bother to tell the story or I don't think it, it compares with Taming of the Shrew and the end of that. Um, I've stopped now. <laughs> <laughs> Please ask your question, otherwise we have to throw you out and it's um, snowing. Um, does the castings change from the original? How did the new guys who are coming into the fold deal with that and um, change and how do they fit in? They've had four, <coughs> Zoe, uh, Luke and Zach have had four days to learn all of that. Georgie and I uh, have already done it, but four days, like... Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we were when uh, the, the complication of people had to leave, but they just came in and they and they picked it up and ran with it and it was amazing. So. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's been really great because um, I'm not trained in um, like 18th century the style. Um, I've only done modern versions of Molière um, in my training, so this was very different for me. And as Tessa said before, I've we've done dance and stuff, so that really helps. But coming in on Monday, I was like. What am I doing? How do I stand? What do I do? Um, so, I mean, these guys have been great at helping, and, and we've just kind of followed their lead, the, the cast, the original cast lead. So it's been, it's been a real pleasure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as, a, as a practical question, you came in on Monday. Yes. How many hours a day were you rehearsing? We rehearsed from half ten till six every day with our lunch. Our lunch. <laughs> 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 so you could miss how long we had after the dress. Oh yeah, we had half an hour. Um, so we did the first dress. We had half an hour, and then we were up for this one. So yeah. Down yeah. Down. <laughs> so if one of you guys were out there. <laughs> yeah. As we just done the final dance. Yeah. Why did you guys want to be part of it? Yeah. It's got rope into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? <laughs> so, one of the, the first ones to come up was the guy playing Benjamin. And straight away, because I worked with Luke, me and Luke went to college together when we were 16, that's when we met. Um, and we've worked together on so many things, he's plagued my life since. <laughs> uh, and we did a one man show in a week, yeah, three right. years ago, and we did it in the studio downstairs. And so when this actor said he couldn't do it anymore, I ran Luke straight away and said, are you free this week? And he's off to America tomorrow. He finished a job <laughs> last week. <week's laughs> and then Henry V was that. Uh, they ended that on Saturday. We're in Birmingham for Sunday, started rehearsals Monday, and tomorrow morning he flies to New York. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so I was very lucky to get him just for the week. And then, one of my other actresses left, and I was like, okay, I've got to replace this actress. And I'd worked with Zoe on some stuff before, so I said to Zoe, would you like to do it? And she said yes, and I was like, wonderful. <laughs> and then two weeks ago, another actor said, oh, I can't do it now. And I was like, this is just fantastic. <laughs> um, so I, ra I ran the bandy first of all. Slid down the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Slid down to like Solid Hall train station. Um, and then I, I was like, I'm not done having a rant. I've got a ring blue. So I rang up Luke, had a rant him, just went, I've got a friend who could do it. And I was like, are they good? And he said, no, they're good. <laughs> and I was like, well, ask them. And apparently Zach was at the bar, came back and Luke just said, do you want to be in a play? <laughs> <laughs> and then a week later you're here. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I, you know, read the script and, uh, you know, you, you just watched it. I mean, the script, for me, it just, it just came out like that. I think it's exceptionally well written. Um, really, I think, you know, as Tessa said a minute ago, the rhythm of it, which really gives itself to, to the, 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 the restoration vibe. <laughs> <laughs> but I just thought it was excellent. I thought it was excellent. I thought, you know, um, why not? As, as Dali said, Luke and I have just finished a six month run, so we're really in performance mode anyway. And um, sometimes you just got to say, yeah, haven't you? <laughs> and, oh yeah, we've got four days. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, why not?
why not? It's different. Um, I mean, so the hardest part is when you get new actors as well. Number one, have they ever done this period? Because it moves in such a way. But then you have to recostume everything because the costumes were made to fit certain people. So then new dress had to be made for Zoe. That's how we And uh, a lot of the stuff actually fit, all of the other costumes fit for Luke. But Zachary had to get a few alterations. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it, it, there's always a challenge with it, but we got through. There was a movement at the back of the question, yes. Um, I think we've shown, you guys have shown tonight that restoration comedy can still very much appeal to the modern day audience, and you send a programme that it doesn't. The answer may be a very simple no, but do you have any feeling as to why restoration comedy doesn't carry quite as well as Shakespeare, which is far older? I could go on all the <laughs> way. No, I was just having this chat with Mar actually, who's uh, one of the members here. And it's all to do, when Shakespeare's writing, it's very timeless. And it's, you know, he's not writing about, well, he is writing about society at the time, but not as obviously. Whereas this period, you don't have playwrights in the 17th and 18th century, you have architects and politicians that write all these plays. So they're all satires of a certain time period. So half the jokes you cannot change, and they're so good you don't want to cut them. So what you have to do is make sure everyone on stage understands the joke. You guys out there might not cut the joke, but there's some other time, and it's a period that holds a mirror up to itself, whereas Shakespeare is holding a mirror, I think, more to humanity and the world, and not what's going on in a certain time. And there's a wonderful documentary on YouTube you can get that exact line from. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Michael Billington, not Restoration Comedy. <laughs> Do we have any more questions or are we going to let them go and have a good rest? Are you going to do anything else? So uh, there, I want, I've been speaking to Andy, there's another play about the 18th century that I want us to write. Um, but I'm going to be, I'm going to have a holiday now until January. I've said, I promised my boyfriend I won't do anything now until, because we decided to do this in July. And we do everything ourselves. We do the set, we do the costumes, we do the makeup, sort the rehearsals, sort of getting all the furniture and stuff. So I've been on the table. So I've been on, the, we've all been on this really for four months and I need a break. <laughs> so in January, we're going to pick up and then find the next project. But I, I mean, I'm from Birmingham. I went and trained in London where I met some of these guys and then extensions of that. Um, and I'm doing my masters as well at the moment. So I kind of need to make sure I get that in order to make sure I can carry on making work in the future. Uh, so I'm going to have a break and then I will see what I've got to do then. <laughs> We'll look for <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you did the will, didn't you, Pierre? Yeah. yeah. Like, did people see that too? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh you've got the following. <laughs> yes. Six. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Twitter, Facebook. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. So, will you announce when this new piece is coming along? Will you let people know? On those yeah. social media platforms. <laughs> really right. right. Follow it. We will be doing some things. Um, Seriously, thank you very much for a most exhilarating evening. It was most exciting. Um, a real privilege to be here. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.